Right, today I'm going to show you how to make a simple race car game. Uh, now what we're going to do, we're going to have to make a backdrop and we're going to have to draw a sprite that looks like a car. So I'm just going to very quickly do that. I'm going to start by uh, using the paint tool. I'm just going to fill the background green. And then I'm going to use the brush tool, make a fairly big line and make it grey. You can begin that would be great. And then I'm just going to do a simple track. You can be more complicated than this, but this is just a simple, simple example. And you can add, of course, more detail. You can add little road markings and things. But as I said, this is just a quick example. So there we are. Right, so we've got a race going. I'm also going to add a finish line, okay? Just to, so we know when we get to the end of our race. So I'm just going to draw that on as a purple line, okay? Now I've done my drawing. So now I'm going to add a sprite. So I'm going to click on the paint a sprite. And I'm going to draw a car. I'm going to draw a car from the top. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to draw a circle. Uh, I'm going to delete that. And I'm actually going to draw a circle this time and select the filled in one. And now I'm going to draw a circle. So a little, or sorry, more accurate an oval. Then I'm going to change the color. And I'm going to add some tires. This is a fairly quick way of doing it, but it gives a nice effect. And you can add do more to it, add some sort of details, things like that. And I'm going to add a little driver. I'm going to have a little blue helmeted driver in the center. Or maybe even the windscreen and then I'm going to use a square to add a spoiler. I'm going to make the spoilers different colors just to help differentiate between the front and the back. Uh, so I'm going to add a blue uh, fin to the back. I'm going to add an orange little spoiler to the front. And the last thing I'm doing, I'm going to just check the costume center so what it turns around. So I want it to turn around the center. So there we go. It's a very simple car. It's a bit too big, but I can fix that in a second. So there's my costume. Uh, I'm going to make, shrink it down a bit. And then I can click and move it around. So I want my car to be here. You notice it is the wrong way around, but I can fix that in a moment. So there's a couple of different ways. In fact, the easiest way to do it actually is just to use this and spin it around. So it's switched. So it's pointing in the right direction. Done. Nice and easy. So there's my sprites. Now, and there's my background. I need to add some keyboard controls. Now, if you've done other example, looks at other videos in this series, you'll see there are different. I've said before there are different ways of adding keyboard controls. I'm going to quickly show you the both ways of how you could do it. Um, you can keep it quite simple and just add when certain key is pressed, uh, motion. So if up arrow is pressed, move forward ten steps, and that's fine. And then if I duplicate this, when the down arrow is pressed, you can move minus 10 steps. should also work. And then when it comes to uh, more motion, when the right arrow is pressed, you want it to turn in the right direction. And then when left arrow is pressed, you want to make it turn in the, this direction. Uh, so then, as you see, it turns. The only problem I have with this site is cars do not do not spin on the spot. Uh, it still works in the same way, but it's not quite as fluid as other control methods. Um, what you need to do to make it turn though slightly better is actually to encourage it to move to move forward and turn. Because if you think about it, all cars actually move slightly as they turn, so they move forward. So if you do this. Now the car will actually turn. You can make that turn circle different by uh, playing around with the distance. So that's one way of doing control. The other way, and I'm going to use some of this information already, is using a if statement. So if the up arrow key is pressed, then move 10 steps. What this does, it sort of it it allows more than one key to be pressed at the same time, and this is waiting for you to push the key then it happens where this is actually expecting the key to be pressed so this is a bit more responsive and instantaneous with this actually is like I'm waiting for you to push the key then I'll do it where this the actual program is running all the time because you're going to put a forever loop around it and you're going to say forever if 
the apparatus to then do something. So it's, it's always expecting a key to be pressed, and, and when it does, then it acts on it. So it's just a little bit more responsive. It's a bit quicker. Um, so let me just quickly pull this together, and you'll see the di and you'll see the difference on the screen. But definitely, when you play it, you'll see a much better difference. Let's just duplicate this. I don't need to make it Let's duplicate. Add sensing uh, when different keys are pressed. I'm just going to pull all these across. It's not quite as easy to duplicate this simply because things are all slightly different. Down arrow, right, and then left. But I can bot take all of this stuff, so I'm just going to duplicate this. When it's up, it's going to move forward. When it's down, it's minus 10. And just to keep the t little turn circle, I'm going to put those in. So now what will happen? Now, the problem with this is uh, I really need to delete this because otherwise it's going to be doing two things at once. So I am going to just get rid of these. And now what happened when you start the game is now running and the car moves more fluidly. I don't know if you can tell the difference just by looking. It's not uh, it's not sort of stuttering and it moves far quicker and far more fluidly and you can move forward and turn at the same time. So that's the control method I would suggest you show people um, but you don't have to. You can use the one I've just shown before. But anyway, right. So we've got some controls. So the car is moving. Now, what would be great is of course to have um, when we get to the something to happen when we get to the end so we want to drive around we want to avoid going coming off the road and when we touch the purple line we want it to say well done so we need to put a little bit of sensing in so let me just get the car back to here so i'm going to go to the car and i'm going to add a bit more information so basically i want this to happen again always and i want it to ask so if it is touching the color green in this case, I want it to actually go, oh, you come off the road, I want it to say something. And so under looks, a little speech bubble can pop and say, hello, you go, you have come off the road. Now you don't want it to set for two seconds because it will pause the game, you want it to set for about half a second. Um, and so when it comes, when it goes to green, it'll say come off the road. But then you actually don't, you you know, if you come off the road, you want it to reset. You want to, you want to get the player to stay on the path. So then you reset it. So if I go to motion, you can actually say go to. Now, little trick with this: if you move the car around, this sprite it tells you where it currently is. So if I put him here, that is his current position. So I want him to go there. I also want him to point in this direction. Now, if you click on the information, the current direction is 75. Well, technically, that's actually more like 90 because it would be pointing in that direction. So I'm going to say point in direction 90. Because if I do this, he's basically pointing straight forward. So now let's try that. Run the program. You come off the road and it resets. So now you've got to be quite careful to make sure you get to the end. And what I want to happen, now when we get to the end, I want something else to happen. So I'm going to duplicate this. And when we're touching purple, I want to say, well done, you have won. But I don't want it to reset, so I'm just going to get rid of those bits. So now, if I can play it correctly, just stop and start it. Can I play it more slowly this time? There you go, well done, you have won. Brilliant. And also, if I come off the road, it says you come off the road and it resets you. So, that is a very simple way of making a uh, simple car race game. You can go further with this, you can add a timer to see how fast it takes you. You can change the track, you can make the track more complicated as well. You could even try and add a second player using different keys.